Welcome to Salt and Light Television's special coverage of the 2014 Synod of Bishops on the pastoral challenges to family life in the context of evangelization. The official sessions opened today, and we heard a number of formal addresses. Together with Pope Francis, uh, the Synod began with morning prayer, and after a short homily by Cardinal Sistash of uh, Spain, the Pope himself decided to intervene and give a, an address. Many people were anticipating this, and the Pope spoke briefly, but he said some very strong and encouraging words. He told the story about uh, the February 2014 Consistory of Cardinals, where Cardinal Casper gave an address about family life, and there were a number of responses. And he recalled that one of his cardinals had told him that some other cardinals were afraid to really speak their minds because in the presence of the Pope, they were not sure how that would be interpreted. The Pope said today that this is not synodality. This is not what he wants. He wants an open and honest conversation, but always in a very charitable way, in a very charitable atmosphere. And so he encouraged the cardinals, please be courageous, be bold, say what you would like to say, and also be able to listen to your brothers with humility. A very powerful message that certainly will have uh, an impact on the deliberations of this particular Synod of Bishops. Then Cardinal Baldessari spoke. He is the General Secretary of the Office of the Synods of Bishops, so he's responsible for much of the logistical preparatory uh, things that go, in, go into organizing a Synod of Bishops. He gave an outline of what the organizational process for this particular synod and the next synod look like in his conversations and workings with Pope Francis. This of course is a whole process. Remember the extraordinary synod is only part one. Part two will come next year at an ordinary synod, a bigger synod with many more bishops to actually deal with the issues. This is only a preparatory synod. Something new about this synod that Cardinal Baldessari introduced is the fact that each day is themed now this is purposely done in order uh, to help keep the bishops on topic, if you will. So there's not just random interventions being given every day, but each day has a particular theme. So, so for example, the family in God's plan, an understanding of natural law, uh, some of the difficult pastoral situations that people find themselves in, things like breakups, violence and abuse, migration, poverty, consumerism and individualism, all of these things uh, will be dealt with uh, in a particular order. Um, after a short coffee break, Car Cardinal Baldessari finished his address. The Pope insisted that we have a coffee break. Uh, all the bishops came back and they heard the official address by Cardinal Peter Erdo. He is Hungarian and he is the Relator General for this Synod of Bishops. Now his job is to synthesize everything that goes on. Now what his role was today was over the past few weeks, he has collected and read and reviewed and synthesized all of the official interventions of the Synod Fathers and the delegates who are going to speak at this Synod. He went through them, he organized them, and he gave a presentation on what are the main issues, what are the issues that people are saying from around the world. At the end of his address, Cardinal Erdo spoke these words. In a real way, we are called upon, above all, to put ourselves alongside our sisters and our brothers in the spirit of the Good Samaritan, being attentive to their lives and being especially close to those who have been wounded by life and expect a word of hope, which we know only Christ can give us. The world needs Christ, the world needs us too, because we belong to Christ. Very powerful words from Cardinal Erdo. Now, today we had the chance to speak to some of the uh, Synod Fathers themselves, and we asked them specifically about what the atmosphere was like inside and what they expected from this particular Synod of Bishops. Take a look. The Synod is a special moment and place uh, of the action of the Holy Spirit. And uh, His Holiness uh, ur urged us to be uh, frankly, to be open, uh, to not be afraid to tell a truth in the name of our communities. And it is some, something very important for us to have a possibility freely and openly express our, our concern about the uh, situation of Christian family in today's culture. Uh, I'm conveying the voice of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, which is suffering right now in the very critical situation. And for Ukrainians, family is the last defense of the human dignity. 
in the moment when uh, your world is falling apart, a family is your last defense. So it is why there is big respect and uh, the sense of sanctity of the Christian family. From my culture, I'm speaking of Asia, India, now the family is so very precious for us. The family values are always traditionally sacred. But I can see that in India and in different parts of Asia, this is being eroded a bit because of globalization, the communications explosion. Uh, and the point is how to regain this, uh, regain uh, how to make sure the family is happy, uh, this, the joy of a person is in working out his own happiness, his joy, his spirituality in the home. If we can get that to people. And uh, I am very hopeful. I mean, I'm absolutely not discouraged. I'm very hopeful. I'm, I'm confident that if we present uh, the message of the gospel uh, really uh, attractively as it is meant to be, uh, we could get back the families uh, once again. Uh, to work out their happiness, their sanctification, their success in the family. I may have my own personal opinion about one point of the family, but how does the church as a whole respond to it? Uh, so I think the Holy Father's special attention on that word, synodality, makes a big difference in the quality of the discussion which we are supposed to make. And I am fully happy about the synodality which he proposes for a solution of the concerns and issues which the family faces today. I'm happy to bring here uh, our, our uh, challenges from the Middle East, our situation in the Holy Land, in all the Middle East. Often I said that we are a church of Calvary, that's right. And for sure the families are, 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 are suffering with us from this situation. So I hope with the influence of the all the pastors, the Pope, with the prayer of all, the solidarity of all, we hope that in the future we will get a better situation. Till now it is not the, the best situation that we have. Uh, we are uh, waiting, we are hoping, we are praying, we are in the beginning. Maybe we can meet after the, uh, the Synod or during the Synod uh, to say some fruit. Till now there is no fruit, there is just expectation, hope, prayer, and uh, the joy to be with all the the, the pastors of the world, uh, and I think I think I I, me, I feel already the solidarity, the feeling of many many cardinals, bishops, to the Mother Church of Jerusalem, and they're happy to to feel that. Now, Salt and Light has been here in uh, Vatican City for a week already, and so last week we've been doing some preparatory work. We've done some interviews that we'll bring you later uh, during the Synod of Bishops itself. But I did have a chance to actually walk through the Synod Hall to take a little tour to see exactly where the, where the Synod of Bishops occurs um, and how the whole thing functions. So we put together this little story for you. Take a look. Welcome to the Paul VI Audience Hall, the famous hall where the Pope has big meetings with all these different groups of people, especially in the winter time when it's a little bit too cold in St. Peter's Square to hold those great events. Come on inside, let's check it out. Nice to see you. This is the man who's responsible for organizing and directing the events inside the Paul VI Audience Hall, especially during a very important event like the Synod of Bishops on the Family that's taking place here October 5th to October 19th. We see in this hall is a big open space. We have lots of different tables set up, different booths, different people are going to be here throughout the Synod of Bishops, but most importantly, you can see some of the tables being set up behind me. This is the famous area where the coffee breaks occur. So, in the morning sessions of the Synod of Bishops, all the bishops come downstairs, they meet here, they have sandwiches, and most importantly, they get a chance to speak to each other informally. Uh, a lot of uh, very important business and conversations happen exactly here, uh, around coffee and around a little dolce. We can get a sneak peek into the actual Paul VI audience hall. And this room, for your information, is entirely uh, powered by solar energy. There are solar uh, panels on the ceiling. Pope Benedict XVI, a great advocate for, for uh, environmentalism and being concerned about the created world, uh, had that installed. Now let's go upstairs and take a look at where the Synod Fathers were, will actually meet to discuss these very important topics of the family. Come on, let's take a look. Our good friend Cardinal Tagle right here checking into the Synod of Bishops. 
I'll just say hello really quickly. Cardinal Tagle. Yes. Sebastian from Salt oh, and Light. Yes. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm good doing to very see well. You. It's very good. good to see you. Wow. How was your trip? It's okay. Good, okay. good, good. You're a little tired. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but I, was, I arrived last week okay. for a series of meetings. Very wow. good. It's great to see you. We'll catch up during the synod. Yes, okay, yes, we'll be yes, here yes, to yes, do yes, some yes. interviews ah, and stuff okay, like good, that. Good, Looking good, forward good. to it. Great to see you. Okay, sounds good. Cardinal Tagle has a very important role to play in this Synod of Bishops. He's one of the presidents, uh, which means there's three presidents from different continents. Um, he obviously from the Philippines. He's going to be one of those three who actually regulates the conversations on some of the days during the Synod of Bishops. So, a very important role that he has. This is an example of one of the rooms where the small language groups will meet. Uh, so they're just getting ready now. Um, you can see microphones, you can see places for about 20 to 30 people can sit in here. And this is after the first week of the Synod, during the second week, people divide up into language groups and come and really kind of hash out uh, some of the big issues that were discussed in the General Assembly. We see very important, a little chapel here for the Synod Fathers, go ahead and take a look at that. Very often before the Synod uh, sessions start, the bishops and the cardinals and the people involved in the synod will come here and say a little prayer. Let's take a look at the hall itself. You got a few guys in here vacuuming the last final preparations before the synod of bishops starts. Uh, this is the hall itself. This is where it all happens. The general congregation meetings. You can see it places for about 300 people. And up here is the main table, table one if you will. This, we met Cardinal Tagle. Cardinal Tagle will be sitting up here in one of these three seats. This is where the presidents sit every day. Uh, if we take another step up here to the highest chair, the chair with the armrests is for the Holy Father himself, Pope Francis. He'll be sitting here. He will be overseeing every session of the Synod and he has made very clear that he wants to come and listen to what everybody has to say. This is the place from where he will listen to everything. Now let's take a look at what some of the Synod Fathers have at their disposal. Very comfortable chair, slight temptation to fall asleep from time to time. No, I'm just kidding. But what do we have here? Okay, we have a little remote control for them to vote. They do take attendance here. It's just like elementary school. Uh, you gotta show up. So they take attendance and you can also vote from this little remote control uh, when there's propositions that are, are proposed. Um, you, can sit, you can see that you can vote yes, you can vote no, and you want to make sure that you uh, tell them that you're present. Then you also have a little individual microphone. The microphone comes out like this. When it's a Synod Father's turn to speak, this little part turns red and he is free to speak. Then the cameras will come on him and everybody in the Synod Hall will be able to see the, the delegate that's speaking. If you take a look up in the corners here, you can see there's windows over there. Those, that's for the simultaneous language translations. So even though official stuff is done in Latin in the Synod, uh, a lot of the bishops and a lot of the delegates will give their interventions in their own language. Um, up there we have official translations in English, French, Spanish, German, and Italian. And if you look over on this side, the opposite side, no windows, that's a place for uh, a lot of the journalists. The journalists can sit up there. Now very few journalists are actually allowed into a synod of bishops. The point of this is of course to give the bishops and the delegates, the people present for these meetings, complete freedom to say what they want, to say what they really think, because they're obviously discussing very important matters for the life of the church and for the entire world. So as you can see, this is the synod hall. This is where all the action will take place for the first week and also throughout the two weeks of the Synod of Bishops. It's also the place where the, the bishops will meet next year for the Ordinary Synod, which will be the conclusion, the great conclusion of the Synod of Bishops on the challenges to family life in the world today. That's all for day one of the Synod of Bishops here in Vatican City. For Salt and Light Television, I'm Sebastian Gomes.